Talks with Shri Ramana Maharishi, Volume 3, Talk 535. Once A asked, How can one be worshipful while engaged in daily work? Shri Bhagavan did not reply. Ten minutes passed. A few girls came for darshan of Shri Bhagavan. They began to sing and dance. Their song was to the effect, We will churn the milk without losing thought of Krishna. Shri Bhagavan turned Sri Bhagavan turned to the Swami and said that there was the reply to his question. This state is called Bhakti Yoga and Karma. Talk 536. The person soaked in the I am the body idea is the greatest sinner and he is a suicide. The experience of I am the self is the highest virtue. Even a moment's dhyana to that effect is enough to destroy all the Sanchita Karma. It works like the sun before whom darkness is dispelled. If one remains always in dhyana, can any sin, however heinous it be, survive his dhyana? Talk 537. Once Shri Bhagavan said, Desire constitutes maya and desirelessness is God. Talk 538. A asked, What is the exact difference between worldly activity and dhyana? Maharishi, there is no difference. It is like naming one and the same thing by two different words in two different languages. The crow has two eyes, but only one iris which is rolled into either eye as it pleases. But only one iris which is rolled into either eye as it pleases. The trunk of an elephant is used for breathing and for drinking water. The snake sees and hears with the same organ. Talk 539. When Sri Bhagavan was going up the hill, the Swami asked, Does the closing or the opening of the eyes make any difference during Dhyana? Maharishi, if you strike on a wall with a rubber ball and you stand at a distance, the ball rebounds and runs back to you. If you stand near the wall, the ball rebounds and runs away from you. Even if the eyes are closed, the mind follows thoughts. Talk 540. Once A asked, there is more pleasure in dhyana than in sensual enjoyments. Yet the mind runs after the latter and does not seek the former. Why is it so? Maharishi, pleasure or pain are aspects of the mind only. Our essential nature is happiness. But we have forgotten the self and imagine that the body or the mind is the self. It is that wrong identity that gives rise to misery. What is to be done? This vasana is very ancient and has continued for innumerable past births. Hence, it has grown strong. That must go before the essential nature, that is happiness, asserts itself. Talk 541. A certain visitor asked Shri Bhagavan, There is so much misery in the world because wicked men abound in the world. How can one find happiness here? Maharishi, all are gurus to us. The wicked say by their evil deeds, Do not come near me. The good are always good. So then all persons are like gurus to us. Talk 542. A asked, I often desire to live in solitude where I can find all I want with ease so that I may devote all my time to meditation only. Is such a desire good or bad? Maharishi, such thoughts will bestow a janma reincarnation for their fulfillment. What does it matter where and how you are placed? The essential point is that the mind must always remain in its source. There is nothing external which is not also internal. The mind is all. The mind is all. If the mind is active, even solitude becomes like a marketplace. There is no use closing your eyes. Close the mental eye and all will be right. The world is not external to you. The good persons will not care to make plans previous to their actions. Why so? For God who has sent us into this world has his own plan and that will certainly work itself out. Talk 543. Many visitors came on one occasion and they all saluted Sri Bhagavan with the single prayer, Make me a bhakta, give me moksha. And they left Sri Bhagavan. After they left, Sri Bhagavan said, thinking aloud, All of them want bhakti and moksha. If I say to them, Give yourself to me, they will not. How then can they get what they want? 
talk 544 on one occasion a few devotees were discussing among themselves the relative merits of some famous bhaktas they did not agree among themselves and referred the matter to shri bhagwan he remained silent the discussion grew hot finally shri bhagwan said one cannot know about another nor can confer bondage or release on another each one desires to become famous in the world it is nature for man but that desire alone does not bring about the end in view he who is not accepted by god is certainly humiliated he who has surrendered himself a body and mind to god becomes famous all over the world talk 545 a was once badly distracted by sexual thoughts he fought against them he fasted 3 days and prayed to god so that he might be free from such thoughts finally he decided to ask shri bhagwan about it shri bhagwan listened to him and remained silent for about 2 minutes then he said well the thoughts distracted you and you fought against them that is good why do you continue to think of them now whenever such thoughts arise consider to whom they arise and they will flee away from you talk 546 a asked a person does something good but he sometimes suffers pain even in his right activities another does something wicked but is also happy why should it be so maharishi pain or pleasure is the result of past karma and not of the present karma pain and pleasure alternate with each other one must suffer or enjoy them patiently without being carried away by them one must always try to hold on to the self when one is active one should not care for the results and must not be swayed by the pain or pleasure met with occasionally he who is indifferent to pain or pleasure can alone be happy talk 547 disciple what is the significance of guru's grace in the attainment of liberation maharishi liberation is not anywhere outside you it is only within if a man is anxious for deliverance the guru within pulls him in and the guru without pushes him into the self this is the grace of the guru talk 548 a visitor asked shri bhagwan in writing the following questions one were the differences in the world simultaneous with creation or are they of later growth two is the creator impartial then why is one born lame another blind and so on are the eight dikpalas 33 crores of gods and the seven rishis existent even today maharishi refer these questions to yourself and the answer will be found after a pause shri bhagwan continued If we first know ourself then all other matters will be plain to us let us know ourself and then enquire concerning the creator and creation without first knowing the self to seek knowledge of god is ignorance a man suffering from jaundice sees everything yellow if he tells others that all things are yellow who will accept this statement the creation is said to have an origin how like a tree and the seed from which it has grown how was the seed produced from a similar tree where is the end to the series of questions therefore one must know one's self before the world is known talk 549 shri bhagwan often speaks of namaskara prostration in the following strain this namaskara was originally meant by the ancient sages to serve as a means of surrender to god the act still prevails but not the spirit behind it the doer of namaskara indeed intends to deceive the object of worship by his act it is mostly insincere and deceitful it is meant to cover up innumerable sins can god be deceived the man thinks that god accepts his namaskara and that he himself is free to continue his old life they need not come to me i am not pleased with these namaskars the people should keep their minds clean instead of that they bend themselves or lie prostrate before me i am not deceived by such acts talk 550 somerset mugham a well known english author was on a visit to shri bhagwan he also went to shri to see major chadwick in his room and there he suddenly became unconscious major Ch- Chadwick 
requested Shri Bhagavan to see him. Shri Bhagavan went into the room, took a seat and gazed on Mr. Maugham. He regained his senses and saluted Shri Bhagavan. They remained silent and sat facing each other for nearly one hour. An hour. The author attempted to ask questions but he did not speak. Chadwick encouraged him to ask. Shri Bhagavan said, All finished. Heart talk is all talk. All talk must end in silence only. They smiled and Shri Bhagavan left the room. Talk 551. A man asked Shri Bhagavan, How is it that Atma Vidya is said to be the easiest? Maharishi, any other Vidya requires a knower, knowledge and the object to be known, whereas this does not require any of them. It is the Self. Can anyone be so obvious as that? Hence, it is the easiest. All that you need to do is to inquire, Who am I? A man's true na name is Mukti, Liberation. Talk 552. There are some buildings in the ashram. They used to have some plan which somehow could not be followed in entirety. Therefore, A and the Sarvadhikari did not agree on many details and there used to be trouble between them. A was once highly disgusted with the state of affairs. He asked Shri Bhagavan, what could be done under the circumstances? Shri Bhagavan said, which of the buildings was which of the buildings was according to a plan made by these people here? God has his own plans and all these go on according to that. No one need worry as to what happens. Talk 553. The Ashramites once asked Shri Bhagavan, How were we all in one previous births? We do. Why do we not know our own past? Maharishi, God in his mercy has withheld this knowledge from people. If they knew that they were virtuous, they will grow proud. Contrawise, they will be depressed. Both are bad. It is enough that one knows the self. Talk 554. Maharishi, just as a river does not continue its flow after its discharge into the ocean, so also a person loses all movement after he emerges in the self. Talk 555. Sri Bhagavan once recounted how Kavyakantha Ganapati Muni asked him, My own opinion is that a man can live on rupees 3 a month. What is Sri Bhagavan's opinion in that? Maharishi, a man can live happily only if he knows that he requires nothing wherewithin to live. Talk 556. Major Chadwick asked Sri Bhagavan one night, The world is said to become manifest after the mind became manifest. There is no mind when I sleep. Is the world not existent to others at that time? Does it not show that the world is the product of a universal mind? How then shall we say that the world is not material but only dreamlike? Maharishi, the world does not tell you that it is of the individual mind or of the universal mind. It is only the individual mind that sees the world. When this mind disappears, the world also disappears. There was a man who saw in his dream his father who had died 30 years ago. Furthermore, he dreamt that he had four more brothers and that his brother, father divided his property among them. A quarrel ensued. The brothers assaulted the man and he woke up in a fright. Then he remembered that he was all alone. He had no brothers and the father was dead long ago. His fright gave place to con contentment. So you see, when we see ourselves, there is no world and when we lose sight of the sight, we get ourselves bound in the world. Talk 557. A visitor asked, We are advised to concentrate on the spot in the forehead between the eyebrows. Is it right, Maharishi? Everyone is aware I am. Leaving aside that awareness, one goes about in search of God. What is the use of fixing one's attention between the eyebrows? It is a mere folly to say that God is between the eyebrows. The aim of such advice is to help the mind to concentrate. It is one of the forcible methods to check the mind and prevent its dissipation. It is forcibly directed into one channel. It is a help to concentration. But the best means of realization is in the, is the inquiry, who am I? The present trouble is to the mind and it must be removed by the mind only. Disciple 
आर देर रेस्ट्रिक्शंस टू बी ऑब्जर्व इन फूड महर्षि सत्वा फूड टेकन इन मॉडरेशन डिसाइपल देर आर सेवरल आसनास मैंशन विच ऑफ दैम इज दि बेस्ट महर्षि निधिध्यासन इज दि बेस्ट टॉक फाइव हंड्रेड फिफ्टी एट ए विजिटर आस्क श्री भगवान वेन आई हेर्ड ऑफ यू ए स्ट्रॉग डिजायर एरोज इन मी टू सी यू वाई शुड इट बी सो महर्षि द डिजायर एरोज इन द सेम वे एज द बॉडी एराइज टू दि सेल्फ डिसाइपल वॉट इज द पर्पज ऑफ लाइफ महर्षि टू सीक टू नो द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ लाइफ इट इट सेल्फ इज इट सेल्फ द रिजल्ट ऑफ गुड कर्मा इन पास्ट बर्थ्स those who do not seek such knowledge are simply wasting their lives talk 559 a man asked shri bhagwan shri bhagwan can know when i shall become a gnani please tell me when it will be maharishi if i am bhagwan then there is no one apart from me to whom gnanam gnana should arise or to whom i should speak if i am an ordinary man like others then i am as ignorant as the rest either way your question cannot be answered talk 560 when shri bhagwan was taking his bath a few bhaktas were around him speaking to themselves then they asked him about the use of ganja hashish shri bhagwan had finished his bath by that time he said oh ganja the users feel immensely happy when they are under its influence how shall i describe their happiness they simply shout ananda ananda saying so he walked as if tipsy the bhaktas laughed he appeared as if he stumbled placed his hands round a and cried ananda ananda a records that his very being was transformed from that time he had remained an inmate for the past 8 years he further says that his mind now remains at peace talk 561 disciple what is swarupa form and arupa formless of the mind maharshi when you wake up from sleep a light appears that is the light of the self passing through mahat tatva it is called cosmic consciousness that is arupa the light falls on the ego and it reflects there from then the body and the world are seen this mind is swarupa the objects appear in the light of this reflected consciousness this light is called jyoti talk 562 there is a statement in the book vichara sagara that though a person realizes the self once he cannot for that simple reason alone become a mukta he continues to remain a victim of vasanas Sri Bhagwan was asked whether the realization referred to was the same as the gyanis and if so why there should be a difference in their efforts Maharishi the experience is the same every person experiences the self consciousness or un- self consciously or unconsciously the agnyanis experience is clouded by his latent latencies whereas the gnanis is not so the gnanis experience of the self is therefore distinct and permanent a practitioner may be long may by long practice gain a glimpse of the reality this experience may be vivid for the time being and yet he will be distracted by the old vasanas and so his experience will not avail him such a man must continue his manana and nididhyasana so that all the obstacles may be destroyed he will then be able to remain permanently in the real state disciple what is the difference between a man who makes no attempts and remains an agnani and another who gains a glimpse glimpse and returns to agnana maharishi in the later case a stimulus is always present to to goad him on to further efforts until the realization is perfect disciple the shruti says shakriti vibha vibhatoyam brahma loka that is this knowledge of brahman shines forth once and forever maharishi they refer to the permanent realization and not to the glimpse disciple how is it possible that a man forgets his very experience and falls back into ignorance shri bhagwan illustrated it with the following story there was a king who treated his subjects well one of his ministers gained his confidence and misused the influence all the other ministers and officers were adversely affected and they hit upon a plan to get rid of him 
They instructed the guards not to let the man enter the palace. The king noted his absence and inquired about him. He was informed that the man was taken ill and could not therefore come to the palace. The king deputed his physician to attend on the minister. False reports were conveyed to the king that the minister was sometimes improving and at other times collapsing. The king desired to see the patient. But the pundit said that such an action was against dharma. Later, the minister was reported to have died. The king was very sorry when he heard the news. The arrogant minister was kept informed of all the happenings by spies of his own. He tried to foil the other ministers. He waited for the king to come out of the palace so that he might report himself to the king. On one, on one occasion, he climbed up a tree, hid himself among the branches and awaited the king. The king came out that night in the palanquin and the man is hiding jumped down in front of the palanquin and shouted his identity. The companion of the king was equally resourceful. He at once took out a handful of sacred ash vibhuti from his pocket and scattered it in the air so that the king was obliged to close his eyes. The companion shouted victory to the king and ordered the band to play so that the other man's shouts was drowned in the noise. He also ordered the palanquin bearers to move fast and he himself sang incantations to keep off evil spirits. The king was thus left under the impression that the dead man's ghost was playing pranks with him. The disappointed man became desperate and retired into the forest for tapasya. After a long time, the king happened to go hunting. He came across the former minister seated in deep contemplation, but he hastened away from the spot lest the ghost should molest him. The moral of the story is that even though the man was seen in the flesh and blood, yet the wrong notion that he was a ghost prevented right values being taken. So it is with a forced realization of the self. Talk 563 a group of people came on a visit to Sri Bhagavan. One of them asked, How can I keep my mind all right? Maharishi, a refractory bull is lured to the stall by means of grass. Similarly, the mind must be lured by good thoughts. Disciple, but it does not remain steady. Maharishi, the bull accustomed to stray takes delight in going astray. However, he must be lured with luscious grass to the stall. Even so, he will continue to trespass into the neighbor's fields. He must gradually be made to realize that the same kind of good grass can be had in the in his own place. After a time, he will remain in the stall without straying. Later, a time will come when, even if driven out of the stall, he will return to the stall without going into the neighboring field. So also, the mind must be trained to take to right ways. It will gradually grow accustomed to good ways and will not return to wrong ways. Disciple, what are the good ways to be shown to the mind? Maharishi, thought of God. To be continued. Om Namah Shivaya.